Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. And we're still here. But I think the story of Elijah has a huge bearing on where we are right now. That light's flickering. And uh, we're going to take a look at it in the Bible and see if it lines up with anything on the timeline. And tomorrow is a very big day on the Enoch timeline. It's Ascension Day. It's the day that Jesus ascended in front of everyone. Jesus makes the comment that in a few days that he will send the Comforter. So a few days after Jesus ascended um, is Shavuot. That's the date that the Comforter came. And on the timeline, I can show you all the way from the head of the year until uh, that point uh, each and every day that passed. And it lands on the third month and the sixth day, which is 66 days from the head of the year. Very high watch time between the 18th, or right now, honestly, because it's uh, already the 18th. i got to fix that light. It's already the 18th in um, Israel. And I would imagine that even though we're to look to Israel, that... It will be like tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in Israel. It will be, um, I believe, I've heard um, Spinebreaker say that at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it's the same date on the entire planet. As you know, 3 o'clock in the afternoon is when Jesus gave up the ghost on the cross. So let's go into the pictures. We'll start here. And yes, that keeps happening and still happening. So, in my last video, I surmised that when somebody made a comment that I spoke about and they used the term bang on about, I thought they were possibly from Australia. But apparently this is a term used in the United Kingdom. So, when this person made this comment, I didn't know where it came from. So, a vernacular is a like this, bang on about. We here don't know what that means. It is a vernacular, and you can determine, based on a vernacular, where someone is in the world. And because I made this comment that I thought it was from Australia, this person here made the comment, the UK people say that. Apparently, this is a term used over the United Kingdom. So... I'm from up north. A vernacular is a, a word that can, for example, uh, a vernacular, we see it all the time in the Bible. And we spend a lot of time discussing what we see in the Bible based on our vernacular or based on our language. So the problem with that concept is a vernacular or a term used like no one knows the day of the hour. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it, it, it's pointing directly to to a, a date, for example. So, I'm from up north. We use the term vernacular. I believe down south here they use the word colloquialism, which is the same word. It is a uh, a phrase or a, a word used at a certain time in a certain place. By a certain group of people. And in order to figure out what they're saying, you have to go to somebody who's from the UK who readily uses this word or do research in history to find out when this phrase was used, by whom was it used, and uh, how many different locations use this phrase. Okay. So I want to go into this in order to show you, and again, I'm from up north, uh, down south, I think they use the word uh, colloquialism. So, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, that's one, with the voice of the archangel, that's two, with the trump of God, that's three, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. They which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds 
to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is not only used for the bride. This this uh, Bible verse. This Bible verse is also used for the saints that are in the tribulation, and it is also used for the Jew for the end of the tribulation. It says. Uh, let's see, did it rise, uh, shall rise first. So this is a term used, rise first. This is, this is the rapture that it's speaking about. I'm going to give you a better example. Now we beseech you, brethren, this is uh, 2 Thessalonians 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. This is speaking to now, our time right now. Let no man deceive you by any means that they, that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first. Okay. What does that mean? That means that it means one of two things. And, and I'll tell you, the way the uh, saints are looking at that is that the church is going to be full of people and they're just going to walk away from church. And I'm telling you, it's not. I made this diagram before here on a planet full of the bride Let's just, the, the Bible records that there's between um, 100 and 200 million people, somewhere in between those two numbers, 100 to 200 million people called the bride. Do you think that every dead person will rise at that time? No. Those in history who have been watching and dreaming and hoping for this day will rise. The other ones will not. They will rise at their time. When is their time? That is yet to be understood. Uh, and I'm leaning towards five months and ten days from our time because the Bible does talk about the time being cut short uh, five months, two five months. So, from the world's perspective, and, I, and I'm going to give you a really good example of this uh, looking at Elijah and Elisha here in a minute. But from the world's perspective, looking on, what would you see you would see that everyone who has been saying that this day is coming suddenly will disappear there will be one of two reactions one reaction is going to be they warned me and um i know it's going to fix this light all right i think i got it a little bit darker, but it's okay. So they will say, oh, he he kept saying, when you see me go, they'll know what happened. Others who aren't even watching don't have a clue. Eight billion people on this planet. There's a very small select group of people that are trying to figure this out and watching and dreaming of that day and dreaming about how heaven's going to be and what it's going to be like. There aren't very many people doing that. Not at all. And so... We see in this that there is this day that is a falling away. That is the rapture. I know there's a lot of argument about uh, apostasy and this and that. This is from their, you have to stand from their perspective and their viewpoint. And their viewpoint is there is this falling away. There is this great escape, this great exodus that happens. And it's not and it, and they are the true Christians that have been just relying 100% on Jesus and dreaming about him coming back. No works involved whatsoever. And they're going to see this falling away. And this is what the Bible is speaking of, is that. And then, once the falling away has happened, very shortly thereafter, and I'm going to show you this in the, uh, in the story of Elijah and Elisha, that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This will happen after this falling away. Not very long afterwards, this will occur. 
And this is the person who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that God sitteth in the temple, uh, so that so that he, as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay. I wanted to point out a vernacular Turkey Day. I put it, I punched it in, and the the internet knew exactly what I was talking about. This is a local colloquialism. You would call it Turkey Day. If you said Turkey Day somewhere on the other side of the planet, anywhere on the other side of the planet, they would have no clue what you're talking about. They might understand what Thanksgiving is uh, uh, to uh, America, but again, this is a word, a term used for Thanksgiving, Turkey Day. So that is a vernacular. All right. So my point is, um, I don't know what happened to the picture. It's not there. But my point is that this phrase that we use to be to be uh, caught up and to be taken away is a vernacular to that time. And we've seen it in the uh, Latin Bible and in the original Greek that it means harpazo in rapture. So it is in there. It's very clear. And we can't argue it because it's a vernacular of that time. And we attempted to um, translate it which sometimes you shouldn't. Sometimes just some words from a specific region, like Turkey Day or Thanksgiving, maybe you shouldn't translate it into that language on the other side of the planet because they're still going to be like, I don't know what that means still. It's Thanksgiving. It's, it's you know, the way over there in America, how they give thanks. Anyway, I wanted to point that out uh, as far as uh, rapture is concerned. Where are we at on the timeline? Okay. We have started the year on the day that Lazarus died. If you start the year any other time, the phrase that Jesus makes, the comment that he makes, are there not 12 hours a day, does not apply to any other timeline than this one. I'm not saying that this is the one we have to follow because God could be using any calendar. He could definitely be using the first sliver of the moon after the sun crosses the equator. He could be using uh, the sun crossing over the equator. He could be using uh, the creator's calendar with the full moon. He could be using the first sliver of the moon after the sun reaches Aries. He could be using any one of those. But for that phrase that Jesus makes, that are there not 12 hours in a day, this is this only happens in springtime on one day, and that day is March 16th. That day, there are exactly 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. If you change the math and use any other date, you cannot have Lazarus risen uh, on, the, on the equinox. He will not have been risen on the equinox. It will be a totally different day. It is not. The equinox is not the day of equal parts. It is the day the sun crosses over the equator, but there are not 12 hours in the day on that day. If you change anything, Mary and Martha's ceremony on the third day, and then them being clean after seven days, and Jesus going to have a meal with them on the eighth day cannot occur because Mary and Martha could not have eaten a meal with Jesus if they were not clean. The math works out perfectly for it to be on the 8th. You'll see here that Jesus' triumphant entry is exactly on Nisan 10, March 26. And exactly 57 days later, it lands on Shavuot. I've done the 57-day count throughout the year, and a Pentecost lands on everyone. The Bible very clearly says you will Begin your count on the Sabbath after. Jesus, as we know, rose on a Sunday. The Sabbath after would be seven days. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. On that Sabbath after, you begin your 50-day count. So, Jesus goes to the cross on Nisan 14, March 30th. 
Three days and three nights, a full three days and three nights he spends in the grave. He has completed this full three days and three nights on April the 2nd. On April the 3rd, remember, it becomes the next day in Israel after nightfall. It, technically for us, it's still April the 2nd, but for uh, for for the Jews, or Jesus, back in those days, the new day began at nightfall. So it became the third. So he rose. This is why there's a little bit of a skip in here. He rose on a Sunday. He meets Thomas in the upper room on a Sunday. Jesus did not begin his walk with man the day he rose. He told Mary, do not touch me, for I have not ascended to the Father. He could not be touched until he had ascended to the Father. As a matter of fact, in all four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see that no one touches him, except for in the Gospels of Luke, because this is the bride, and the 144,000, because these people are chosen out of the bride to stay here on earth, to warn everyone of what's coming up soon. In other words, on this day, they will be changed, just like we will be changed. We will be carried to heaven as the bride. They will stay here changed and uh, unkillable, unstoppable, 144,000, and they will walk around this whole planet warning everybody about the mark. That's what they will do. Jesus returns. Now, you'll see a few accounts of him. Now, remember, Jesus rises very early in the morning on the 3rd, but he stays throughout the day, and he is seen by many throughout the day. Uh, you'll see uh, an account of this amount of people saw him that day and the other amount of people, but it's still the 3rd. He rises. He goes to heaven for seven days. He comes back down to Thomas in the upper room. We know Thomas and them have not been walking with him. He has not told them that, hey, I'm going to take off for seven days and come back. He hasn't said any of that because they've locked themselves in that upper room. They are afraid of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So they are locked in that upper room. Jesus goes through the locked door. Thomas believes when he sees. Okay? Then we go past second Passover. Then we come here. I had made a mistake in my last video, which I researched and found out that Abraham was in fact born in in the year 1948 from creation, not in the year 1948 BC. He was born. The flood happened in 1656. And what would that leave? 288 years, something to that effect that I'd have to sit down and... Uh, and, and do the math on that, but I, I didn't. But from Abraham being born in 1948 from creation, he crossed into the land of Canaan on, and they're saying, May 14th, 2023 from creation. Now, remember Noah sat in the front door of that ark for seven days. Nobody came to the ark. During those seven days, I believe we are in those seven days right now. On May 14th began those seven days. Tomorrow, don't know what time, but tomorrow Jesus will ascend. 1,993 years ago, Jesus will ascend tomorrow. This is Sivan 3. This is the 63rd day of the year starting the year on March the 17th. Three days later, now I want you to notice, from the cross, okay? From the cross, there's three days he was in the grave. Seven days for uh, him to see Thomas in the upper room. Forty days that he walked with man, and then he rose. He rose after 50 days from the cross. That is the Pentecost. He performed his triumphant entry four days before, and the Holy Spirit will return three days after Jesus ascends, like the Bible records a few days after. He will ascend. He ascends, and three days after the Holy Spirit will descend, will come back to us. For many, many forever, as far as I can recall, 
um, we've taught or been taught that after Jesus rises, he walks with man for 40 days. But it makes no sense, if that were true, why Thomas would be locked in that upper room. And the apostles up there in the upper room locked in, hiding out. After that, you have no record of them hiding in that upper room. They left that upper room after that. And they walked with Jesus for those 40 days. And then he ascended. And then three days later was Shavuot. So again, remember or notice that from the cross to Ascension Day, it is 50 days exactly. From the triumphant entry to Shavuot, it is 57 days. This is setting up the 57 days for each Pentecost hereafter. And some of these Pentecosts land on super important days like um, Mary going to visit Elizabeth on New Year's Day. New Year's Day is a Pentecost. A Pentecost lands on uh, September the 11th, the first day creation began. Uh, when you go on down here, this is the first day of creation. It is a Pentecost, September the 11th. It's also the day the towers came down. I think uh, Satan is really acting out here towards the end. And then you have the Pentecost down here, January 1st, New Year's Day. So, we've done this math. We've seen that from the cross to the day he ascends is exactly 50 days. Exactly. It is not 43 days. It's not 44 days. It's not 47 days. It's 50 days exactly from when Jesus went to the cross to the time he ascended. And then three days later was Shavuot. It wasn't 10 days. It was three. All right. Let me see. What else did I write up here? I told you about Abraham. Let's see. From that moment, from Shavuot, it is exactly five months and ten days to the date of the flood. And remember God saying something about cutting the time short, which I thought was pretty interesting when I figured that out. This is also on Shavuot, the day that Enoch was born and raptured, 365. Okay, I've been trying to figure out when Elijah was taken, and I still haven't. And you saw this on Tony, uh, the Cataclysm Tony Early's uh, YouTube. Um, he talked about this. And I had no idea this existed. But Harold Camping called out the end of the world on May 21st of 2011. I was there. I had high hopes for that day. Did not happen. Obviously, it's been uh, 12 years. He also called out 1994. What's amazing is that were we all told were we all told 12 years ago that this would be the day? This is Shavuot. I don't even think, if I recall correctly, Harold Campy knew that that was Shavuot. I don't know how he came to May 21st, now 12 years later. I could probably pull out one of my old timelines to figure out how he came to this date, but it's amazing that he did. And that May 21st forevermore was back then, was at creation, and will be through the thousand years the day that Shavuot will be celebrated. Because it is the 66th day of the year, starting the year on March the 17th, and it's Sivan 6. It is Sivan 6. So, if, my, if the timeline that I had made can, didn't continue to do this type of math, where everything fell perfectly in line with the dates, Shavuot would not have landed on Sivan 6. But Shavuot is Sivan 6. And it works out, all, all the math works out perfectly for that date to happen. Okay. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I just uh, did this again. Let no man deceive you by any means, for there shall come a falling away. This is the rapture. This is when, from the perspective of everybody on planet Earth, that this great departure from the church that's us we go out we leave there will be no one at that at that moment at that second in time there will be no one on earth that is a faithful believer in the blood of jesus alone for their salvation they are still hanging on to their works and i would compare this to those three days and i would say that if the rapture happened tomorrow that in three days later, they would begin receiving um, the Holy Spirit to teach them when their day is coming. 
I've been talking with Isaiah 53. He has joined our little chat group. So in our chat group, we have me. We have Isaiah 53, which he's a lot of fun to talk to, by the way. Very smart. Um, the Cataclysm, Tony Early. And Kevin Spinebreaker, he, he hosts the whole thing for us. And then Will from Worship and Watch. And in here... He has done some math. I did. He, he did. He did 2,520 days uh, because he added 1260 twice. I just added 12, and he went backwards from the date May 11th. Now this is the date that he found that all the trees were present. Um, I think it was in Luke. I have. I don't recall, but it, this is the day where Israel was accepted by the United Nations on May 11th of 1949. This is the date all the trees were present on May 11th, 2030, will be exactly, well, he says May 10th, one day before, because that'll be, the May 10th will be one day before they turn 81, if, uh, if we go by that, that timeline from, from when all the trees were present. But if you count back, the 1260 that the the Bible speaks of and the 1290 that the Bible speaks of, you land on May 18th. Isaiah 53 is adding or subtracting 2520 for two 1260s, which adds up to 2520, counting back. And he is landing on, I think he said June 16th is his furthest out date that we can go as far as the rapture. All right. Oh, uh, this is Ikra Symphony. She was praising uh, the Cataclysm Tony Early's video. video. You got to go watch that. I'll put a link to the people I'm talking about in my group um, in there. Uh, Ikra Symphony is having computer problems, so I think she said she's made her last video. Maybe she can get it uh, cleaned up or something to make more. She does such a fantastic job. I hope uh, I hope she does. Um, but she says, so I watched uh, uh, Tony's video and didn't know uh, didn't know that the Chinese had recorded the year 30 A.D. of Christ's crucifixion. So, and she also found an annular ring of fire solar eclipse on May 21st of 30 A.D. So that is the day the Holy Spirit comes back. Isn't that crazy? Here's Eker Symphony again. Uh, oh, so she's helping me out with Elijah and Alicia. And she found something that actually falls perfectly. And that's why I was pointing out the 50 days from the cross to ascension and then three more days to um, uh, Shavuot. So the prophet searched, the prophets searched for Elijah for three days. I did not know that. I, I, I read it a hundred times. I did not realize that they searched for three days. When this rapture occurs, there will be those that we did our job. If we have done our job, that's what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to be bickering. Look at the date. Don't look at the date. This is the, 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 the thing we're supposed to do. Oh, that's the mark. It's not the mark. Oh, you can't set dates you can't look at this oh you have to do this you have to do that that we know there's nothing that we have we don't even have to do this we don't have to do anything we just driven to do it because that's what we dream of you know um when you decide hey guess what i'm gonna go buy this particular brand of new car before you do that you start going into everything to look at the interior of the car to study the car to figure out Everything you know about the car, can you afford the car? What color do I want? And you look at all these different pictures, you spot them suddenly. Have you ever noticed that when you've decided, hey, I'm going to go, uh, like my wife wanted a Jeep Wrangler, so I bought it. And somehow when we decided, okay, we're going to go out and find this Jeep Wrangler. And um, suddenly that's all we see is we want a Jeep Wrangler. And then all of a sudden there's just Jeep Wranglers like everywhere, everywhere. I'm like, there's one, there's one. You didn't see it. You didn't notice it until you were looking for it. And I say the Holy Spirit has been poured out on our, all flesh, but those who are avidly searching and wanting to see it, those are actually seeing these dates. And I'm going to show you something that I found in Elisha to explain that it's not about the date. It's about the search. So so the prophet searched for Elisha for three days, and then Elisha was mocked. And I know his name is Elisha, but I say Elisha so I can separate it. 
so you understand the difference between the two. And then Alicia was mocked and scoffed by the 42 youths. Huh? It's his turn, isn't it? Elijah's gone. The prophets are searching for Elijah that he might be dumped off on a mountain. And then in a, two verses down, you see, in the second verse down after this, you see these 42 youths that were mocking Elijah. Guess what Elisha has become? He has become a watcher. He heard, if you see me go, he knows exactly what happened to us. He knows where we went. He knew the second he saw it happen. I know that all the people that have warned this say, ah, yeah, okay, okay, we'll see when it happens. I know what's going to happen to them. The second they see me go, they're going to drop to their knees and they're going to pray. Every knee will bow and there's going to be a massive group that I know, that I have warned, that this day is coming, and they are going to drop to their knees. These 42, but guess what? He's going to have mockers. He, remember, he gets a double portion. He doesn't get only a double portion of knowing. He has a better, uh, he has a better um, uh, finger on when the date is going to be because he has seen the rapture occur. He knows what happened because there was somebody out there that said, if you see me go, he has his finger on the pulse of when that event took place. So guess what? He has a double portion of when his date is coming. And he's going to start doing research. And what's going to happen to him? He's getting a double portion of scoffers. They are going to be scoffing at him, just like he was at us. Yeah, the rapture's not going to occur for another 100 years. 2023 is going to pass. You'll see. It's a bunch of nothingness. It's not going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. And boom, it happens. It happens. Guess what? Those people that you planted that mustard seed in, that you said, if you see me go, those people are going to drop directly to their knees and pray, Jesus, please. But I've told them it's not the end. You're not going to hell. You're going to go through some tribulation so that you will turn your heart to Jesus. And again, I don't think it's going to take that long. I don't think it's going to take that long at all. But they'll start warning other people who weren't even watching in the first place. But guess what? He's going to have mockers. And he sent two female bears and mauled them. So at the end, when that rapture occurs, guess what? It gets even worse. Stage two of the tribulation becomes even worse. I think that's what you were saying earlier. If that's the case, then Elisha was caught up three days earlier, and the mocking and scoffing occurred with Elisha. She notices this. Hats off to her. She has noticed this. So if the rapture occurs on ascension, you see, we always look at everything. Hold on, let me finish reading here. So if the rapture occurs on ascension date, May 18th, which is tomorrow, and people search for three days, which they're going to give you every excuse they can think of, except for the rapture. It was aliens. It was this. You know, it was a, it was a lightning bolt. They just disappeared. Uh, it, they, they took all the evil ones out of the way, and the only ones left are us great people. That's why we're still here. We've inherited the earth. There's all kinds of things that are going to be said to, to the people that are left to try to convince them that what just happened is is not a rapture of the bride, but, you know, it's a terrible thing. Don't follow it. That's what they're going to attempt to do. Rather than the three days of darkness. And then on May 21st is the rapture party day, which uh, uh, my friend, uh, my brother in Christ, uh, Tony Early uh, found, the cataclysm Tony Early, mocking and scoffing. That is the day, the national day of mocking and scoffing. This thing's still going on. Here we are 12 years later, and they're still mocking and scoffing Harold Camping. Do you think it's possible that we were told 12 years ago when it was going to happen, he just had the wrong year. It seems possible, but the mockers are mauled by God in the sense of for Psalms 37, 13, which I didn't look that up. So let's keep going. Um, okay, I, wanted, I, I highlighted that, but I want to just go into this real quick. I did that wrong. Hit the wrong button. Here we go. Now, let's go through this, and, and then I'll, I'm going to explain. This is very important to us because Elijah is a picture of the bride. Elisha is a picture of the sleepy church. And the 50 prophets are a picture of the Jews who, no matter what, won't believe until the very end when they will finally look up 
and they will cry and they will realize who they had pierced. And that's all God wants. He wants a change of heart. He wants a repentant heart. He wants not to stop. Oh, I can't believe I sinned this. This is such a terrible sin. It's not about you. It's about you recognizing what he did and how powerful Jesus is. We all talk about Michael, the archangel, how powerful he is. Gabriel, the archangel, he's so powerful. He has all this power. They can't harm one hair on the head of Jesus. He created them. He is a infinitely more powerful than Michael the Archangel and uh, Gabriel. So Jesus came as a lamb before, but he's not coming back as a lamb. He is not coming back here to be passive. He is coming back here with all power, all power. And I think everyone needs to recognize who he is and how big he is and how powerful he is. He is not a... uh, a cute little lamb anymore. He is a lion and he's coming back for his people. And he you will use tribulation to change the hearts of people. Let's read Elijah taken to heaven. This is Second Kings uh, 2, verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah. Okay, we are in the time now when the Lord will take us up right now, this is our time right now, would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. They started in Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. Please stay here. And for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. Okay. He's telling him to stay. He knows that Elisha doesn't believe in this rapture date. He knows that Elisha Uh, has on the work of the world. Elijah knows that Elisha is not going with him. However, I could tell you churchgoers and workers, and I'm better than they are because I've done this and I've done that. Oh, I have a place in heaven. I've done the greatest things and I deserve to be there because I'm such a nice person. And they're awesome people. They give, they're good people. They do all the right thing. They're, if we were looking at each other, which God doesn't, we don't, we're not allowed to look at each other. It's God that looks at our heart. You'll find that they are counting on those works to get them into heaven. That is Elisha. He is the sleepy church. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Stay here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. Okay, there's a rapture date right there. That's a rapture date. That is the Lord telling Elijah, Leave here, go to Bethel, leave here, come to heaven. There's a date that is going to happen. This might be the date. Just keep following the dates, and eventually I will rapture you. And Elisha Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. These people believe in Jesus. They love Jesus. They just have works attached to them. So they went down to Bethel. Now, they've left Gilgal. They've gone to Bethel. And now now you you won't hear a word out of Elisha. The conversations are between the people of the city and Elisha. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha. Why did they come to Elijah? No, they came to Elisha. They know they can work on his mind. Can't work on Elijah's mind, but they can work on Elisha's mind. They have rapture's not going to happen. I don't know why you listen to those crazy people. They've been saying that forever. Just like it's been for the past thousand years. It's not going to happen. We got hundreds of more years. Do what you want to do. You know, live your life. Don't believe in that. That's what they're doing. And said unto him, knowest thou, and they're mocking, knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, yeah, I know. They're teasing him. And he said, yeah, yeah, okay. I know, hold your peace, be quiet, I've heard enough. But he's still a believer, he's still going to go to church, but he's just not going to listen to that that person that says, if you see me go, he's not going to listen to that person. But he's still in the church, he's still following Jesus. And here Elijah is a picture of the bride, picture of Jesus. Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. Stay here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. All right, so now we're leaving Bethel, and we're going to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets, sons of the prophets, 
that were in Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him. They didn't come to Elisha now. They came to Elisha. And here's another date. Here's another date that we're going to pass. And Elisha still hasn't gone. And and I don't even know if Elisha may be asking him. I know the people are asking Elisha, hey, what's going on? The same exact words are used. Said unto him, knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today. This was said twice in two different cities. I um Eker Symphony's been working on how long it took from to walk from each city to each city and she's trying to uh map it out to where did it begin happening on the head of the year on March the seventeenth, or did it begin they begin this journey when Jesus went to the cross or when Jesus rose, triumphant entry perhaps. What point did this happen? So she's trying to do the math on that and to find out you can work yourself backwards from from the day Jesus ascends and see how long it took that trip that they're taking here, uh, backtrack it to see what date possibly that they began this journey in order to know when uh, Jesus ascended. When did Elijah ascend? This is a picture of Jesus ascending. This is a picture of us ascending. All right. Again, the same exact words. They're going to take uh, away thy master from thy head today. And he answered, yeah, 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 I know. Hold your peace. He doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't. He, he believes in Jesus, but he loves this world, and he hasn't not, not quite accepted that. But he's still, still in the church, still following Jesus. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. Here's another city. And another city, another date. And he said unto... He said, uh, as Lord liveth, and as, thy, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too, both of them, went on. So as we go through this dates and these dates and those dates, and we're trying to figure this out, we're all here together, all of us. The saints are here along with the bride. The saints and the bride, we're all walking this walk together. We believe in Jesus for sure. And that's why I won't argue with the saint over are we in the seals? Um, are we, was that jab thing? Was that the, the mark? And we, all these different things. We, what are we going to do? What are we going to do as the bride? What is your job to do? To convince them that no, this wasn't and, um, you know, yeah, you're supposed to watch? No, the answer is no. They know their time. And that's why they think, are you supposed to convince them the seals haven't been opened? No, they have faith. They're the ones that we're not worried about. They're going to go just in their time. Who we're worried about are those going here to the lake of fire. That's who we're worried about. That's who we're trying to, 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 to get out of that category of going to the lake of fire into another category. And what other categories are there? We know them. The Bible teaches them. There's the bride. There is a saint that goes to the tribulation. But they're too going to be raptured. There's the Jew. There is, uh, apparently, uh, I listened to uh, Wayne over at We Are the Overcomers. There are three raptures, and he's found them all, and he's explained them all, and he does a very in-depth study in the, in the Bible. Let me get back to where we were uh, here. Okay, so here we are. Now we're going to Jordan. I will not leave the... Uh, Head to the, uh, yeah. I believe it said two or three times to him that this date's coming. Now, you got to ask yourself, Elijah, if he knew the date, wouldn't he have told Elisha or somebody in the city? Or did he not know the date and he was surmising because he, they're saying that today is the day. And they've said it now two to three times. Why would they think that that was the day when it wasn't? Yet he still traveled to another city. He still traveled to another date. So, next thing, next thing that happens. The 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. Now, they, he's got this whole group of people watching that this event might take place just like we do. We have all these people watching and, and they're not believing, but they're still watching. They just kind of want to see if it happens. And if it does, I can promise you there's going to be a bunch of people that say uh, that wasn't a rapture. That was aliens or something. These are the people 
that do not believe in any of this, but they're still kind of curious enough to watch. And they're, they're, they've actually made, like I showed you, a website to laugh a mocking day of, of May 21st. And I find that to be, you know, that's these people. Yeah, that's the 50 prophets right here. They're prophesying, but they are not believing. They're actually mocking that day. And it's a bad place to be because at least Elisha is walking with Jesus. He just will not tear off the world quite yet, but he will. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle his robe, his coat, and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, and so they were divided into two, and so they went over on dry land, which we've seen this before. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, now this is, this is, this is the same thing as us today, what should we say? When you see me go, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy Holy Spirit be upon me. He's asking. All right, all right. If this is actually true, if you're actually going to go, this is really going to happen. I kind of want to believe it, but I, I'm kind of not sure. But I kind of want to believe it. If you do, I want a double portion. And that is exactly what happens. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, if you see me go, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, if you don't see me go, how many people in your daily walk have you said, have, if you see me go, so they know where you went? If they don't know where you went, they will be drawn in by the mark of the beast. They'll be drawn in by the lies of the media. They'll be drawn in by the lies of pastors who say that the wicked have been taken out of the way. They'll be drawn in by all these lies unless they have that mustard seed that you've planted. You have to plant that mustard seed. If you see me go, I can promise you anybody that's around me at work or anywhere else, I say it all the time. If you see me go, and I do that on purpose so that when they see me go, because this is very important, they know where I went because they've asked me. I have young kids that come up to me all the time going, hey, what does this mean? Hey, what does that mean? Hey, is there any chance for me? And of course there's a chance for you. That's what this is all about. And so it happens all the time. And I mean, I, 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 I'm not the authority on it by any means. I'm like, like uh, Watchman River says, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm not even a good teacher, but I'm just a guy who loves the Lord and is looking so forward to this day. Anything I find, I want to bring it to you so that you can have, you know, armament so that when you go out, you know what to say to somebody. Maybe you don't even know what to say to somebody, but if you see me go, it's probably brass tacks is probably right down to the bottom what you need to say and then let the questions begin there not hey i mean of course say hey, do you love jesus does jesus love you and you know have you accepted the lord those are important things but i think you start off with if you see me go and then they'll be like well what do i and i've had i've had the question after that i've had the question well what do i need to do to be saved and i say recognize just recognize who he is accept what he did he is a free gift for you all you have to do is accept it how do i do that go to a quiet place by yourself no you don't need to come to me and pray with me you don't need to i don't hold any power whatsoever it's between you and your father just like matthew 6 5 and 6 says go to a closet and then god will proclaim there will be celebrations in heaven over what you just did there will be parties thrown in your name over what you just did. That is how important you are to him. That's what I'm talking about. And then after that, once you've learned and you understand and you begin watching, start asking people, if you see me, go. So let's continue on. If thou shalt see me when I am taken thee, I shall be so unto you thee. But if not, it will not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on. They're just walking along. They're on the other side of the water. They're walking. Elisha still doesn't know. He's still walking. He hasn't stopped. He hasn't 
built an altar. He's not nailing, uh, kneeling down to pray. He's still walking with Elisha. He doesn't know exactly either, but he knows it's time because he's been told it's time. We know it's time. We just don't know exactly quite yet, but we're going to know. And it came to pass as they went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, the horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. The bride goes, the saints of the tribulation stay. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. If you see me go, and Elisha saw it. And he cried. Look at him now. Think of being in the, the, the place of Elisha right now. Now it has happened. Now he sees it. It has happened. It has happened in real life right in front of him. He didn't believe it. He mocked maybe about it. He was upset when people were asking him about it. He, he loved Jesus, but he, he had all this baggage with him. And Elisha saw it and he cried, my father my father you recognize that the chariot of israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his clothes of his mantle oh i'm sorry he took hold of his own clothes and he rent them he tore off the world right there that moment the very second that elisha went is when elisha tore off his own clothes he had no use for anything of this world any longer his house his nice car his 401k his future retirement his future raise um all the plans that he had made all these things he was a follower of jesus but he hadn't surrendered everything to him quite yet and he took up his mantle he took up the mantle of elisha that fell from Elisha, back down to him, and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan, and he took the mantle of Elisha that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? There is a period of time here. He has power now. He's instantly received a double portion, but he's asking where God is. Where is he? I think there's some silence here for three days, and Eker Symphony showed this to me. I'm going to show it to you in a second, or I showed it to you actually from the 18th. There are three days until Shabbat, and I'm going to show that to you right here. And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Now, here is a story about um, this is where, and I think this is. Um, hold on a second. Let me read it so I can uh, remember. And when the sons of the prophets, which were, oh, I want you to pay real close attention to this, this, this part of the, uh, of second Kings, very close. And when the sons of the prophets, now, now what's going on is Elisha saw him go, but guess what? So did the prophets, but guess what? They didn't believe. They thought Elisha was dropped on a mountain somewhere. They had no idea. Where Elijah went, Elijah went. Elisha did because why? He saw it. He tore off the world and he believed. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, "The spirit of Elisha doth rest on Elisha." They knew that Elisha had the spirit because he had the the cloak, the uh, what do they call it? the mantle of uh, Elijah, and they came to meet him. And bowed themselves to the ground before him. He was now in charge. He is now the one searching for the date. He is now the one that the Holy Spirit will enlighten to all of these things that we have found and understandings that we have learned. He is the one that will receive a double portion. And they know it. Remember, Elisha performed all kinds of miracles. And Elisha did so many more after Elijah. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold, now there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Fifty strong men. How many days after Jesus rises and defeats death? I'm sorry, after Jesus goes to the cross, how many days are there to Ascension Day? Fifty. Remember I pointed that out earlier. There are fifty days from the cross to the day Jesus ascended. He did this on Sivan 3. 
the 63rd day of the year, which is May 18th, tomorrow. 50 strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, lest preadventure the Spirit of the Lord hath taken him up and cast him upon some mountain. So, yeah, they think that Elisha was raptured, taken up into the sky, and spit out and killed, falling down from however high, landing on top of a mountain somewhere. So they're sending out 50 strong men to search for him. What do we read next? This is where uh, they have pointed this out to me, and I thought, wow, I've got to make a video of this. And um, cast him in some, or into some valley, and he said, Ye shall not send. Alicia said, no, you don't need to send anybody. He's in heaven. I saw it. I know where he went. I saw it. They saw it too, but they didn't believe it. So in other words, the entire world is going to witness this rapture event. But only the saints of the tribulation, just like Alicia, who tear off the world, are going to know exactly what happened to us. Only those people that you said... If you see me go, this is what happened to me. This is where I went. It wasn't anything else other than this. Those people are going to be Elisha. Those who are not listening and believing in this part will not. They will be as the 50 prophets. So they sent out these 50 strong men. And guess how long they sought for? Three days. What happens three days after Jesus ascends? It's Shavuot. This is the day the Holy Spirit descended for us. There were three days where the people at Jesus' time, watching him ascend, waited for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is, and you all who have it know, you will be able to read something like this and read between the lines. You will see things in these verses that you never saw before. It's the Holy Spirit guiding you. Just like Every single watcher that I've ever seen who are seeing things throughout, like just on television and movies, and I mean, you name it, license plates, and look at us all seeing 1111 and all of these things. That is the Holy Spirit in you because you can see, they can't see. But you can. Everybody else will just watch the movie and not even realize that they just mentioned a, a date. How many, you know, I mean, people watched Homer Simpson come up with the date. What did he say? May 18th or May 21st? I don't recall what date he said. But, I mean, how did they know that, you know? They sent, therefore, 50 men, and they sought for three days, but found him not. They were searching. The Holy Spirit was not there. There was three days of darkness after Elisha went up. Even though Elisha had a double portion, the Holy Spirit had not descended yet. They were waiting. They searched for three days. And guess what? And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not. Didn't I tell you not to go? I told you not to go. I, knew, I told you you were going to find him, but you didn't believe me. And no matter how much you talk to some people, they will not believe you. Now, another thing they pointed out to me um, in our, in our uh, group text that we do, and he went up from thence into Bethel. He's gone to another city now, and he was going up, by the way, there came forth three children. This is after the three days now. There came forth three, I'm sorry, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, and they're telling him now, because he's now telling everybody, our day is coming. There's going to be a rapture. If you see me go, he's starting to do the same thing that we're doing, which is why you don't argue or fight with a saint. They think we're in the seals. They think that was the mark. They think all these things. You don't have to argue or fight with them. What's the point? Do you tell them not to, to think those things? And then when are you going to tell them to think those things? After you're in heaven? No. You let them go. They believe at least. They're going to see. They will see. Just like Alicia saw, they will see. So we don't want to stand in their way. We don't want to argue with them. There's no point. And mocked him and said, go up, thou bald head, go up. 
you know, rapture yourself. What are you, what are you doing here? Go rapture yourself. That, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. He is able to do all kinds of things during this time period. And the Holy Spirit will be with the saints just as the Holy Spirit is with Elisha. And there came forth uh, four Four, what is there? Came okay, forth two she bears out of the woods, two she bears, and tear forty and two children, forty two children, forty two months. So that's a half year. That's one thousand two hundred sixty days. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel. He's still going around. He's, he is now going from town to town. What's he talking about? He is talking about the rapture. And these people, these kids, teased him to go up. Okay, so. That's my video. I wanted to get that out. It's amazing how uh, Elijah and Elisha match. I've been asking a lot of people, do you know exactly the date that Elisha was raptured? They don't. Um, uh, there is some good work showing that he was raptured on, tomorrow on May 18th and that Elisha received a double portion three days later. Uh, they searched for him for three days, three days of darkness, and three days later on May 21st, uh, he receives a double portion. Again, Elisha did not know when he was going because he kept going from town to town. They kept teasing Elisha, saying, what's going on? Isn't he being raptured today? And guess what? He wasn't. He went to the next town, and he still wasn't raptured. But they kept asking him the same thing. I thought your master was going today. Yeah, 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 whatever. Hold that piece. I don't want to hear it. So it's the same thing that's happening now, and it is the same thing that will happen to the saints. But our worry are these people that are going to the lake of fire. you got to tell them, like I do, everybody I come across, if you see me go, I need you to know that this event, Yeah, I don't care if you believe me or not, but if you see me go, if the event actually does occur, like I tell you it's going to, if you see me go, then I need you to not believe what the world is telling you to do and start doing your research just like Alicia you'll receive a double portion once you believe once you tear off the world 401k tear it off throw it away all we need is Jesus we don't need anything else so anyway like comment share and subscribe and I'll put a link to uh, Tony's uh, YouTube in there because uh, he had a very good video talking about the uh, talking about China knowing that Jesus was on the cross in 30 AD. We think of China and we think, oh, there's barely any Christians over there. But isn't it ironic that they have proof, they have proof that Jesus went to the cross in 30 AD. So that's pretty incredible. But I'll put a link in the Discord also, so you can come in there into Discord. Uh, Isaiah 53 has very graciously joined us in the Discord. And uh, he has been given his own room. We try to limit, remember, the discussions to that YouTuber about his videos in his room if he wishes to engage anyone in conversation. Otherwise, uh, that's fine. But typically, we try to keep um, the controversial conversations in windows that we've provided uh, without because uh, it, it almost seems like uh, we're going after that today I, I have viewpoints and i have a room too actually i don't run my discord um my moderators do and they do such a fantastic job i don't even run it they do but i have a room in there and in my room um, after this video, they will post my video in my room. There's several, um, like Dr. Barry, he doesn't come into the Discord, but we do post his video and they have a chance to go in there and discuss his video, which is enlightening, to say the least. Um, uh, so it's it's awesome uh, to have those rooms to, to be able to do this. It's an awesome Discord. Uh, it's very uh, open and uh, so open to discussion and, and understanding this stuff. And, and uh, we have so dad stash is in there doing his gematria. It's incredible the things he finds. So uh, a lot of, a lot of, I, I can't even begin to name all of them and everybody that's in there in discord. Thank you. You're doing a fantastic job in there. And uh, uh, we're almost home. We're almost there. I, I literally, I mean, literally, I'm really looking at tomorrow <laughs> really hopeful for tomorrow. It just lines up. It just lines up. Again, 
We don't know if the day Jesus ascends is a picture of us ascending. We don't know if Shavuot is a picture of us. Holy Spirit descends. We ascend. It came, the Holy Spirit came down. We leave like the Holy Spirit on the 21st. Because the Holy Spirit came down, hasn't left. It's not leaving until uh, until we leave. We are the restrainer. He is the restrainer. And he resides in us. So guess what? When we go, the whole world is going to be like, um, you know, when when uh, this great apostasy happens and everybody leaves the church, we are the church. We are leaving. That's what it's talking about. And the second we leave. Three days later, I think, is when the Antichrist will be revealed. And they'll be like, no, it was just, it was aliens or, you know, it was a nuclear bomb. They're, they're going to create a, a, a catastrophe so big that you won't even be thinking about what happened to the person that was sitting next to you that disappeared. You're going to be worried about yourself and this uh, calamity that's going on around you. So anyway, we will chat with you again if I find anything like that. This just matched so beautifully from the cross actually from the triumphant entry to uh, Shavuot, it just matched so beautifully, 50 days from the cross to uh, the day Jesus ascended. It, it couldn't have matched better with that. Elisha and Elisha is a rapture story. Elisha, I've heard say, they say he has no genealogy, so it's a perfect picture of the Gentile bride that's being taken away. We don't have a genealogy. Only the Jews have a genealogy, so it's the perfect picture of us being rap raptured away. And what better day than the day Jesus uh, ascended on uh, May 18th, according to the Enoch timeline, of course. I'm hoping that, uh, well, I know I, I know this is accurate based on the day of equal parts, uh, so that I, I firmly believe in. But I don't know if God is going to use, uh, like uh, Ricardo Garcia says, his, his clock that he shows in the sky, which is pretty amazing, if he's going to use the first silver of the moon after the sun is in Aries. So we just don't know. Um, but neither did Elijah. He just knew it was going to happen, just like us. We all know it's going to happen. Uh, we're just going from town to town. We're going from date to date. We're crossing that river. It's so loud and rushing. We're jumping from stone to stone. It's so foggy. We can't see the other side. But with faith, with faith, we keep going from stone to stone. With faith, we keep going from date to date to try to figure this out. And then all of a sudden, a chariot, a whirlwind is going to appear and it's going to separate us from everyone else and we're going to be caught up and that is going to happen. And when exactly? I don't know. Can you imagine tomorrow we're all in heaven going, it finally happened. I'm going straight to the room. There's a room somewhere with this timeline on it in the room. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot bigger. It's a whole lot bigger uh here than when I take a picture and show it to you, but I can zoom in on it. So, um, but on this wall, there's this timeline, and of course, so much has happened. And you only have 364, 365 days in a year. Some say 360 because of the 12, 6, and 1290. I still think it's 364 no matter what you do, but that's just me. But there's going to be this timeline. On the wall, some, most people are going to be like, I don't need to see that. I'm here. Me, I'm going to be like, all right, where's the timeline room? Because I need to know when the year actually started. I need to know when all these events took place. And you're talking about the history of 6,000 years appearing on a timeline like mine that encompasses 364 days. How many events took place? And we're going to be like, Oh, this is the day this happened. Oh, this is the day that uh, Abraham did cross, but also this happened, this happened, and this happened. I'll be like mind blown. So I can hardly wait to get there. You know, I can hardly wait. Um, we might find out that Enoch was born and raptured on um, Shavuot. And we might find out that Elisha was born and raptured on uh, three days earlier on the day Jesus ascended. I don't know. Guess we'll find out. All right. I'll keep going forever. We'll chat with you again later. Come in the Discord so we can actually talk instead of the comment section. That's so much work. And I'll leave a link in there for you. Oh, I got to hit this button. Oh, no. What do I got to do? Oh, this.